Let me know when y'all ready. You back from Let me turn my stuff down. Is she ready yet? I'm gonna start putting in that to get ready from now on. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's so ignorant, man. It's got to be the <laughs> ignorant shit during a pandemic ever. Wow. Let me stop playing solitary. I was educating myself. <laughs> what up, what up, what up? Welcome to Good Vibes TV. That's right, hey, GD TV. Hey. We're back for another week. Is I, myself, RL, my man, DJ PRS1. Woo! And the lovely, it's Alicia, right? Alicia. Alicia Gaia D. Oh, my God. Dr. Alicia Gaia D. You make me blush. You got me over here all hot. <laughs> Hey, so we're yeah, back. Uh, she I she I that's the brother. That's 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 the true brother right there, man. She I man. She ain't she I. She's just a damn doctor, you know, and she's a, she's attractive. There's nothing mm-hmm. special. <laughs> hey, so so let's talk been playing Alicia. school teacher since she was a kid. Now she's actually turned into one. Let me let, let me tell you something. You being a school teacher and being attractive is perfect. But when you put those glasses on, it is every man's fantasy. <laughs> you just you turn into you turn into this. I'm telling you, you turn into a. If you started an OnlyFans page and had your glasses and just I said a teacher in Florida and just had on like an apron with a spatula in your hand, a spatula, you would, <laughs> you would get paid. Serious, man. I'm telling people, people that just don't understand. Um, there's a girl on OnlyFans and she's attractive. And when she do her videos, she's always wearing something scampy. You know, she might see a little bit of the areola or whatever. So she started and she wear booty shorts. She started an OnlyFans page and everybody could not wait for it because they're like, oh my God, we're going to see her naked. She's going to be just playing with herself, all that. She started it for her feet. And she have over 2,500 subscribers, and she's charging $20 a subscriber just for her feet. Damn. You know, it's crazy. So, See, I would start one of those, but mine would call Toe Jam, be called ToeJam.com. <laughs> you know what? But you, you would have some nasty, some <laughs> nasty individuals, like your friend that you work with, that like to watch people dig in their ears and scrape their... Oh, yeah. You got to remind me. You got people that, that they into that. Yeah, it's got a dandruff fetish. I've never seen that yeah. shit before. They, <laughs> there's some weird people out here. Uh, but enough of that. Alicia, how was your week? My week was good. Um, you know, I'm still on the high from the inauguration. I'm just glowing in that honeymoon of having that new president and vice president in the White House. It's just been really nice um just taking in all the executive orders coming through and and just you know appreciating finally being able to wake up and know that someone um with some stability and common sense is actually leading this country once again so that's really good um i'm all you know here in the sunshine shady state And our governor, I I don't know if you guys have seen him on the news, but he's been out there complaining that, you know, we don't have any COVID-19 vaccines and we need to get COVID-19 vaccines. Well, quit selling them to the rich people. The press secretary (laughs) at the White House uh, shut that down yesterday by informing all of the nation and anyone international that's listening that basically... Florida hasn't even used 50% of their vaccines. Wow. Wow. And, you know, our <laughs> governor that has taken 
you know, he walks in the shoes and the footsteps of his former leader. He um, is leading away and holding press conferences, talking about we have no vaccines. Yet everyone's coming here for a vaccine. Just the people that live here can't get it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's how it works. Everybody else got one from Florida, you know, oh. in Alabama, Georgia. Everyone's driving to Florida, getting their vaccine. Wow. Moseying like, on their way. He is so, a dick, man. <laughs> it's always some excitement. I'm telling wow. you. Dick and the crazy thing is, didn't, didn't he, like, he opened up, like, a whole lot of uh, facilities and places so people could be able to go and get vaccinated. And he's well, just he, 50%. He did, but he's saying that only people that are 65 and older can get it. Well, and I don't, so what, which is not even true because um, I have a niece that's uh, 25 working in pretty much. She uh, works in healthcare, but not directly with patients. She runs a, a an imaging facility, right. and she already got her second dose, her second shot. Good for her. Good so for her. it's really not, you know, I, I I've heard from other people that, you know, police officers, their wives, their families, they've all gotten it. So really, it's it's just. No, it's just not being rolled out effectively. Yeah, it's all about who you blow. No. I mean, no. <laughs> because, like, you guys are in Baltimore, and we were talking about this before we, we started the show. You know, we've been, our teachers and students have been back on campus uh, since the month of September. We've been back since the 15th of September. We've been back on campus. So, Think about children in a classroom with teachers, older teachers, young teachers with underlying health conditions, uh, people that go home to family members, spouses, um, siblings, parents that are elderly and could possibly have underlying conditions. And a school is a Petri dish on a regular day. Right. On a regular day. You want, you want an illness? Come to a school. Or the hospital. And of course, you know, we're not considered priority, yet we are babysitting pretty much, you know, 40% of the population. Yep. Burger, burger fest. So that's, that's it, awesome. it, it, it's, it's a little bit concerning. It is. A lot concerning. It is. So, it so is. are you back on campus? Um, fortunately for me, I work from home. I'm able to teach my students from home. Right, um, right. I was one of the four people out of my faculty of 85. Wow. That were to work from home. So I consider myself really, really fortunate and just blessed to be able to have that opportunity. But I would also vouch for my fellow teachers that are out there every single day in the classroom with students in and out rotating in and out of their classroom. Some of them are sitting in a classroom with 20, 25 kids at a time. That's not social distancing in any class. So, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. Of course, yes, they're wearing masks, but you know, it's, it's just not right. And so it's really important that we, we're able to get the vaccine. Teachers want it. It's not that we don't want it, and it should be available to people who would like to get it. And of course, I've made it very clear. I'm one of them. I'm ready. I'm Mia. That's what I'm talking about. Ready to get poked. <laughs> I might. I might need to drive to Baltimore to get my vaccine. Oh come Lord, on. we got more than enough. Yeah, come to Hopkins. They give it to the teachers first. <laughs> they do. Like, like we said last week, we, they do. We got teachers um uh, coming down to the hospital. We're not and, even uh, on on the list, right? Not, we're not even counted right now. So our man, our man Hogan, he he made that happen. You know, they want to open the schools up. He was like, "Well, we got these teachers vaccinated, so they've been coming since last week." We um uh, next month, I want to say K through K through five, Dang. and uh, then in in March it's uh. Six through eight in high school is just the crazy thing about high school. Okay, is I might have to make a trip up there in March. 
I can get my vaccine. Right. Yeah. And then high schools, there's only ninth and twelfth graders. They're not letting the tenth and eleventh graders come back. You know, just freshmen and seniors. Right. So, so you know, my sons are sick with that one. They're tenth and eleventh grade. So that you is know. so smart. You guys are doing things right. Egg, hey, is that governor? Doing things right, like so smart. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. impressive. Really, like I said, I'm really impressed with Hogan. I've always been a Hogan fan. A lot of people up here don't like Hogan, and uh, he's a Republican. But he, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter what your party is. Yeah, he, he's he, he's just smart. He's he common sense. If you use common sense, you'd be surprised at just how much uh, uh, you can get done. And later on, because you always want to have someone or saw a group of people who disagree with you. Right. And later on down the road, those same idiots who disagreed with you be like, you know what? They, you know, that shit was pretty cool. You know, it was like, he was all right. right. He's all right. He's they never gonna say <laughs> he was the man. They'll say he was all right. He's all right. right. Yeah, I mean, he's he's one of those that that you know was um, not so much of, of of a fan of of the, our former leader, but um, basically took a common sense approach of uh, of running. If this is how I'm gonna treat my kids, this is how I'm gonna treat my uh, my my state. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. That's how he, that's how he run that's how he runs it, and I think the fact that um, he's been sick, and you know diagnosed with with, with with cancer and stuff like that, and he's been going through remission and going through the hospital, that kind of takes a different. It gives you a different view, when you know of of life and what's important, and it it helped him. I guess it it, it that he's you know taken away from that. He, it's helped him to help us even more. You know what I mean? And that works out pretty good. Oh yeah, when you when your life when you mm-hmm. when you're fighting for your life, it's a huge humanity check. Man, right, it's a whole you right. Know? It opens your eyes to whole uh, different sets of things. You know what I mean? What's really important? Well, the thing is, you know, it. My thing is when you when you when you're in a place of power and and you're in a leadership position, that does not give you a privilege to be an asshole. Bottom line. Right. You know, you're there for a reason. You're there to lead people. You're there to support people. You're there to take people to the next step. You're there to make uh, tough decisions. You're there to do what is right for others. And that's the reason why you have taken on that role and that position, not to be an asshole. Right. And that's the problem with a lot of these governors. Mm-hmm. That's the problem with. Um, a lot of these senators, and that was obviously the problem with our former president. You know, you and I honestly feel a lot of them, them go in there time. with with good intentions, but 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 then it it flips out of control after that. After that power hits you, you know what I mean? They go in there wanting to get paid. Exactly. They there's no good intentions. They go in there with them dollar signs. Yep. We're going to get paid. Um, We're going to get some maybe, gift cards. You know, maybe like 5% of them go in there wanting to make a difference in the world. But the rest of them, they take a look at that, uh, uh, what do you call it, e, uh, forever paycheck, whether you're right. working or not, mm-hmm. all the benefits that come with the position. Um, and, I, you know, I was looking at it um, earlier, just, just how much money these individuals make. And even if they retire, step down, you know, their their pay doesn't stop. They still get nope. the government benefits. That's right. And like the 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 car, like they get they get a, a vehicle with a driver. Uh I mean just all of that stuff, you know. They so they have security, they get a, yeah. they get travel, they can travel yep. for free. Yep. And we we pay that. I tax dollars pay for all of that. It's just it's, it's insane. Yep. You know, um, you know, I hate to sound like an uh, a dick, but I, I I'm I'm, I encourage my kids, like, yo, do what you want to do, but think about going into government. You know, mm-hmm. you know that, that's what their kids. That's what they tell their kids, and they yeah. can't see it. So Too many making you, things right. You know, football and go- government. Yeah, go play ball, then go ahead and you know be a senator somewhere, be an asshole, but keep that money coming in, son. You know. That's yeah. what it is. So, so let's hit up this topic, topic real quick. Let's hit up well, this that's topic. Great. That, this is a great on transition it. for our topic. Yeah. Because we're talking about assholes and <laughs> someone wanted to, <laughs> someone in this Damn. group, not me, wanted <laughs> to put forth that topic of, bum, 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 who is better at running the household? 
Mm-hmm. Men who's or better, women? Who's better running the household, men or women? And the show so, is over. <laughs> and the games begin. So, look, check this out, right? I'm gonna be sensible. I'm gonna be sensible. Men, because I, men. I think, it, hold it, on, it, it's it's hold clear, on. it's it's hold all on. clear. It's men. Hold on, no, hold on. Let us hear first of all from the person who's been married for what seventeen years, just celebrated an anniversary. Is today celebrating being a father after twenty one years? What your uh, eldest son is 21 years old. So let's hear. Mm. Who's ru- because being my brother, I already know the answer <laughs> to this, but I'd love for you to. I oh. want to hear how this household is being run, honey. Mm. Where is Pam? I know she got to be somewhere in the background. Oh, you she ain't really I'm watching. Pam. <laughs> 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 no, I. I'd say, um, if you guys see a hand flying and Regan's cup is like flying across the room, you guys know what happened. <laughs> I'd I'd go with men. Women are a close second. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but but explain why you say men. But explain why why, especially since you've been married seventeen years, you've been a father I mean, for twenty one years. I did. I mean, I, I would say I, I did fine on my own when I was a single dad before, you know, yeah. I did fine on my own. My, my, my clothes was clean. The house was go. clean. My baby had pampers, you know, Hey, <laughs> I did my thing. I'm going to just going off of my experience. You know what I'm saying? I'm off of my experience. You know, I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I, I forgot, you know, I keep forgetting that you was a, you was a single dad. You was exactly. Okay. Exactly. Holding it down, you and know, and I held it down. My bills yeah, was paid, yeah. you know. And, and I hope my audience will realize. <laughs> so all the women out there that say I'm a single mom, he doesn't take care of the kids. This man's wife, ex-wife, jumped on a plane and took off. So kudos, kudos. He stepped up to the plate. I mean, it was dropped on him. Yeah, and I, I'm so I've always uh, admired Cinco that. swim, man. Sink or swim. That's how yeah, I want. So, yep. Yeah, that's yeah. How, so I'm that, that, that's I'm how I'm raising my boys. I'm raising my boys the same way. You know, hey, don't wait for yeah. mom to do it. Don't wait for nobody else to do it. You got to do it. You know, yeah, you got to right. think. Yeah, I think when you're raising these kids, you're not raising kids. You're raising somebody husband, somebody wife. So I don't want your ass come back after you get married. So after you get married. <laughs> Keep yes. fucking going. We're changing the locks. I'm gonna have my rebuttal coming up. <laughs> I hope you ain't try to like call Pam on speaker. <laughs> oh no, I could defend this on my oh, own. Shit. Oh shit. I'm just taking notes. Oh shit. Oh, she oh, look, she's going it. actually writing shit down, yo. I've got my pencil. I am look, taking notes. Typical Who teacher is? writing look, notes down and shit. I'm trying to find percentages, right? I'm on I'm on the tablet looking for percentages like who run a household better. Oh, you trying to run you trying to run stats. Oh, I got oh, you. Oh, you're on your you're you're trying to ask Google? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. So no. th- this is my thing with the, the household. I'm waiting All for the right. comments. No, I haven't seen no comments dropping yet. This, this because they're awesome. waiting for this one to speak. I think they're still in shock. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, because we, you know, we're both religious. You know, uh, well, all three of us, but I know me and me and DJ PRS one off. You know, I know, I know, I know personally. We, you know, I, I hear him talk, and and we both had the conversation. So, yeah. you know, um, when it comes to the household, all right. Uh, before, before you, you know, the whole mercy, you know, mercy thing, see a man chooses a woman, you know, if it's done properly, you know, a woman never chooses a man because that's just not how it's, it's meant to be. So a man chooses a woman, right? And when he finds that woman that's going to be his wife, he finds a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Now in 2021, you know, we're fresh into 2021, but 
you know, over the last few years or it was 30, 40 years, you know, of course, um, there's been that power struggle, you know, and the smart ones realize that it's not about power. It's about structure. And when you have the right structure in the house, things will go smoothly. OK, uh, for me, I saw with my parents, my father said very little. He worked two jobs. Incredible man. Um, my mother did a lot of the talk. Oh, my mother did all the talking. And she always um, directed the, the orchestra. My mother always directed the orchestra in the house. But my father was, um, what, what do you call it? My father was the structure. He was Symphony Hall. Right. My mother was the conductor, but he was Symphony Hall. My mother would have to talk all day long. My father, say it one time. And my mother ran the house. My mother ran the house. But if she, my father wasn't in the picture, you know, it, it was like Trump running the country. You can say <laughs> whatever you want. We're going to have a good time. But because we knew Symphony Hall was coming home at 930, we, we 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 went ahead and we followed the conductor and we did what the conductor wanted us to do. So it goes hand in hand, you know, but men run the household better. They just do. Now, now the key word is men. We're not talking about boys. Yep. We're not talking about these, these little dudes. Yeah, these little dudes out there having kids. They yep. got the typical guy. No. Yeah, we're not. We're talking about men. Mm hmm. Men, men run true kingdoms. definition of father and husband. Yeah, men run kingdoms. Men run kingdoms. Who ruin? Who ruin? Who who collapse kingdoms? Women. Take a, a look at take a look at Samson. It's in the Bible. Don't tell nobody your secret, Samson. <laughs> oh, my hair is my strength. And as soon as he take a nap, the the B I T C H cut his hair. Monica Lewinsky. It is what it is. Take a look at Moses. I mean, I'm not Mo Abraham and Sarah, right? God tells Abraham, you're going to be parents. And Preach. Sarah and Sarah laughed and she snickered. And the bitch couldn't speak for nine months. Okay. You take a look at Adam and Eve. He didn't, he told he look, all right, Adam, don't eat from the tree. Don't eat from the tree. He didn't tell Eve. Well, he didn't go eat the fruit. Eve eat it, and what she do? She uses her bosoms to convince Adam to eat from the, the tree, the forbidden tree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You take a look at any kingdom, any household, any great household, it fell apart because of a woman. She cut that man, man head. Every man lost his position, position of power. Take a look at David. David and Goliath. David was the man. Yep. Saw a woman. It was one of his troops' uh, uh, wives. He promoted this motherfucker to the front lines just so he could get killed and take the woman. How selfish are these women using their beauty to weaken us men to make piss poor decisions in life? It's out of control. Woo! It's out of control. Amen. I stand. I stand where I stand. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, who run the household better? <laughs> okay. Are you done? I'm done. I'm done, Alicia. Uh-oh. And that's all we got time for on the show. So let me, oh. let me, no, we're going to go extra time today. Okay. Okay. Uh -oh. Let me defend since my girl, Savvy, is not even here. Oh, Lord, let me get the Vaseline. Represent, <laughs> and it's about to be done. Uh oh, we got to get the Vaseline, bro. Uh -huh. so, I appreciate, RL, all of your examples. They were very, I mean, they were great, well researched. <laughs> I, 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 I totally enjoy uh, you quoting and pulling evidence from the text of the Bible. <laughs> and giving us all of the examples that you needed to give. 
Well, let me tell you what seems to be the bottom line here and that common denominator. Men are straight out weak and trifling. You want to talk about this connection is bad. Women <laughs> making a man. If a man was strong, a woman cannot make him do anything that he knows he is not supposed to do. So when he wants to go out there and act all stupid and eat the apple and all that shenanigans and then want to act, well, you've made me do it. No, Adam. <laughs> You ate the apple yourself, okay? Now, you talk about your parents. And and I, I totally understand exactly where you're coming from with that. And given our generation and our time, what has happened with men and women, gender roles have evolved. We have, as a matter of fact, just last time we were on this show, we talked about uh, Kamala Harris's niece, who is now, you know, this, this, uh, what, triple book, triple author of three different books, you know, running this amazing company. And, you know, her baby daddy, boyfriend, who she could choose to marry or not is at home raising their two little girls. Right. And so gender roles have definitely evolved. It has changed. No longer is the woman the conductor of this so-called symphony that you were raised in. And I totally understand what you're saying because my parents were raised in that symphony with the conductor. We know exactly what that's like, both Regan and I, because we saw our grandfather out there being that person, doing what he needs to do. And then of course, my grandmother being that conductor, both of them actually, both grandmothers and grandparents. And so gender roles have definitely evolved. I would not say they've changed, but they have evolved. Now, let me get to my brother, who <laughs> is deliberately confused here, talking about, you know, I, I ran my shit. My child had diapers. I paid my bills. Dude, you were a hot ass mess until Pam came along. Oh, my. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. He was now. Let me tell you right now. I had to send my okay, son in line. <laughs> my, I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about to throw this out there because I I can't deal with th this topic. I told you this is this is fired hey, up. Hey, you better mute her, man. Yeah. -uh. <laughs> so this man, yes, his wife took off, left, went about her business, and. He was a working man. He was a police officer. He was raising this two-year-old little child. My mom lived literally down the street. She was there all the time. He also had help from his former in-laws. They were around all the time. So he had the village. Remember that? Village that to raise the kid. The village to raise the child. <laughs> the village raised the child. Everyone was involved and he was the providing dad and he made sure he went to work. And yes, I, I have to say he did his best. He made sure his child was not on the street, not starving, not homeless, not without clothes, whatever, everything good. But uh -oh. was his house really in structure order? No, it was not. So I, that's, 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 that's your opinion, though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but, that's, 
Well, that's it. You had your opinion. You're talking about symphonies and <laughs> orchestras and how women cause all this stuff. You, so you true. had your opinion. And hold on. I asked you if you were done. I'm not but, finished yet. I'm still raking in the cold. Hold on. No, so, say something, so, something Regan. <laughs> I'm waiting. So I'm hold on. <laughs> now, I love how my brother... I, I don't know too much about how you and your wife, and I'm pretty sure your wife is the person running the symphony and the conductorship of that <laughs> orchestra as well. Because I know, I know my sister-in-law can be at her place of business and still conducting what's going on at her house and running the symphony all at once. That's the mistake, women. Y'all tend to make that mistake all the time. Well, y'all, y'all believe. And then I'm that. going to speak for myself. Oh, okay. She be telling yeah. me to shut up, but Let I'll be talking again as soon as she myself. leaves. Yeah. Men are great with regards to certain things that they do. Do they know how to really deal with certain situations? No, they don't. And that's the reason why you have that saying, behind every man, there is a strong woman. <laughs> There's a white cat with a dog. <laughs> yeah. So I'll get off my soapbox until y'all say something again for me. To oh, Lord. Hey, hey, PRS1, come on, man. Who's the older? You older than she is? Yeah, I'm older. You see, the fact that don't, you have don't. to even question that, that's <laughs> a shame. <laughs> come on, man. Come, come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> He's faceless. I, I got to be. Well, I got to say yes. Yeah. And, and my, I know my, my, my wife now, she's, she, you know, conducts the symphony. She she does she does a thing, and writes the music. Yeah, but you know it's <laughs> it's the ground rules that you know a man laid down. Yeah, like we we see. First of all, first of all, Alicia, <laughs> we we put the women in that position of power. I understand it's not something that a woman takes where she moves in and it's automatically hers. We go over here and we appoint you women. Okay, no, y'all ass is lazy. Y'all no, lazy. And that's why the minute a woman walks into the picture, you're like, eh, eh. well, she, <laughs> she gonna be cooking up some stuff today. <laughs> well, let me see. What am I gonna what are we having for dinner? Oh hey, boo boo. Whoa. So <laughs> uh what the, the the house is clean, smells oh. good. I'm in the toilet doesn't way. have any rings Jesus. around it. Must be a woman in here. Uh, oh, oh, oh Lord. I can invite people over today because you know my woman will make sure everything is right. Yeah, yeah you know, and I can't even I can't lie. I cannot lie. That is absolutely true. <laughs> but uh, once again, it's because. It, look, you got to know who you got to know what woman the right you got to appoint the right woman for that. But the man runs the household, no matter what, no matter what. Oh, and hold on, you have store let's, managers. Let's, even, and, and let's then you backtrack have to women. another crazy thing that came out of your mouth. Oh, and what, it's Listen, not so much as crazy, which I'm blown away by. By the way, what about when uh, you Abraham? said? When you said, <laughs> and I wrote it down. Oh shit. oh shit! The man chooses the woman. Absolutely. Where Absolutely. are you out? Or do you have women on a lineup? <laughs> and you're like, uh, no, yeah, I mean, I'll pick that one. I mean, it's, it's just it's it's just the correct order. You see what I'm saying? I mean, let's be honest. Uh, you ain't nothing but a rib. Okay, so I got a whole lot of ribs. You know what I'm saying? I just go ahead and pass them out. Bring whichever one I want back in. At the end of the day, you know, a man chooses the woman. Women don't choose men at all. 
And when you see, uh, you take a look at these relationships that's not working, it's because a woman chose a man. And women don't know how to choose men. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you take a look at it, you take a look, take a look at the world today we live in. The women out here, the men they are choosing, man, they are losing. They are losing. But you take it to relationships where a man choose a woman, even though we know Pam run that household, guess what? PRS one chose her because there was something missing in his life and he seen, he knew what it was, and he saw exactly uh what he needed in his life in her. You know, when women go out and choose men, they don't know what they're doing. You have no, women have no clue when it comes to uh, uh, choosing a man because, yo, you're women. You're women. Y'all have no idea. You're lost. And, you know, and it, look, take a look at these women out here today. Take a look at Cardi B and Offset. Right? Horrible choice. Horrible choice. But she looked past it because he make millions of dollars, too. This nigga been cheating on her since day one. Then got caught cheating again four months ago, and she took him back. You take a look at Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj chose a goddamn sex offender to be her husband and then had a kid with him. When they moved to California, bought a house, they're ready to lock his dumb ass up because he forgot to register. He didn't forget to register. He already know he's a sex offender. He's going to register everywhere. You take a look at all these women. But take a look at Michelle Obama. But even though she's, she, you, can, you look at her and you say she's a superior one in a relationship because she just, she, that aura of her. But Rock chose her. He chose her. You take a look at uh, um, Angela Bassett, and I can't think of his name, and I feel so bad. Um, Courtney Vance. Courtney Vance chose her. You know, you take a look at, uh, ooh, it's bad. I can't think of any white people. That's pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, take a look at George Bush Poole. and Laura Bush. Absolutely. Absolutely. But on uh, his end, I think she did the choosing because that motherfucker dumb as hell. Um, <laughs> but men, 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 there's something. All right, so every man knows what's missing in his life. And when I say missing in his life, missing in him as far as a character flaw. Any real man, uh, we, we talk to each other about it. That's one thing we won't talk to women about. We have, we, we all know what our character flaw is. And when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and dating these sorry ass women out here chasing these these skirts, um, you just you you start making better choices for yourself. You start wanting to make better choices for yourself. And one of the choices that you're looking for in a woman is how can I fix my character flaw? And it's not necessarily fixed. I need someone to make me better. Who's going to make me whole? Women, y'all don't count because y'all been playing house since y'all was kids. Let's be real. Y'all get y'all got dolls. We got superheroes and we're destroying the world. We're fighting bad guys. From the time we are born and able to play, nothing is real with a man. Nothing. We're superheroes. We're cops, cowboys, and Indians. We're doing all kind of crazy shit. I had a homeboy jump off his mother's Um, <laughs> you know, we're just we just live outside the box for so long that it, even when we're 16 and 21, we believe we're just just unbeatable. But women play with dolls, um, their house, learn how to cook, clothes. Well, that's the thing. And women play with dolls or teddy bears or stuffed animals or whatever, and they live in a fantasy world thinking that men are supposed to be Prince Charming. And then we meet y'all asses and realize, ain't so. Mm -mm, that's, mm -mm, not, mm -mm. That, that, that's not true. That is not true. Now, we, I totally talking. disagree with you saying that men are the ones that make choices. Because that is not the case. I have a lot of friends, a lot of friends, that are married in relationships that are successful marriages long term and a lot of them are my friends and I know for a fact they chose the men that they're with so yeah so they you need to come out of your bubble RL I don't know what prehistoric 
medieval oh. time, you're still living in barbaric <laughs> land, uh, hey, talking about what men are still picking women and and all of this this power struggle and the symphony and the orchestra and who's <laughs> conducting <laughs> and all this stuff. <laughs> We need to bring you into year 2021, honey. We just inaugurated Vice President Kamala Harris into being the, the, the Vice President of the United States. So come on now. She didn't even choose her husband. He didn't choose her either. They were set up on a blind date. But, but, but wasn't he taking care of her children, niece or something? And matter? No. Her, no. Be- her. Hold on. Her best friend, her best friend set up Kamala Harris and her husband on a blind date. And she decided to call him and go out with him. Oh, no, no, no. But he chose to keep her. Oh, he chose to keep her? Are you think he he's regretting her. that decision right now? He is now yeah. the second man of the United States. So, and, that's, that's, and I hate to say it, but that is like the gayest title ever. You know, I, I feel for him. But I mean, you know, it is what it is, you know. All right, that's if a you were sitting up there, you would not be mad. I, 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 let me tell you something. If I was sitting <laughs> up there, I would be so, I mean, I'd be proud, right? But you realize at the point, <laughs> at that point, like, I'm the bitch. <laughs> not even. But no, you're now the kept bitch. Not not Ooh. just the bitch. Ooh. You are now you are now the bitch with a mansion. You are now the bitch with secret service around you, your own decal. You are now the bitch that's got cooks and people to wait on you and Damn. making sure that your suits are nice, telling you where you're going today. Oh, you want some Starbucks? What would you like? No problem. Not a problem. So you know what? I would I would be that bitch anyway. I, I'm gonna be honest with you, that's kinda hard. Only because, you know, as a man, you know, it's no different than these gold digging men out here that find women that were funny and power. You know, you still the bitch. You know what I'm saying? You kinda gotta do what she wants. You gotta make her happy. You can't do you can't fuck up like most men and be like, Oh, we're good, because she's gonna drop your ass. Well, she that's got the, all the problem. Power. This is why you're still living in the medieval times where all this, all this fucking up shit. When you get to that caliber in life and you are, you, you can look at your woman and be like, yeah, that's the woman I married. Woo! Then, you know, you have that confidence and that character to be that man next to her side. Because he's not just sitting there in the house, you know, watching, you know, how real housewives of Atlanta going, oh, what do I do today? This man actually has a platform as well and a schedule because the just like the first lady, um, the second lady normally would have a platform. You know, they take on certain things like, for example, when Dr. Jill Biden was in the White House as the second lady, she was uh, Vice President Biden. She had her own platform and her platform, she created an entire, and I was I, I was telling Regan about this because um, our nephew, my nephew is in the military. She actually started this entire, um, this completely, she created, taking care of military families. This entire service to take care of military families from the spouses to even when the military um, people, they, they come home and they, they don't have, you know, places to live and they don't have amenities and they don't have, some of them, they need counseling or whatever, whatever services they need. She had that network set up and that was her platform. So just like she had that, and she's actually going to continue that, even being back in the White House now as the First Lady. However, um, our first man is going, I mean, our second man in the White House, it's going to be interesting to see what his platform is. And this is not a man that's just Joe Schmo off the street. 
This is a successful attorney. He was an entertainment attorney, had his entire his own law firm, and he actually was an attorney for Kamala Kamala Harris's best friend who works in Hollywood. And this this woman hired his firm for something, and she's like, you know what? I think you would be great for my my best friend. And he's like, oh, okay. Well, who's your best friend? And she's like, uh, Kamala Harris. And he's like, the attorney general? She was the attorney general of California back then. And so, you know, basically they they got together. And But it wasn't like he's sitting there totally feeling, oh, what am I going to do? That would probably be Melania. Yeah, I was about to say, he got a whole lot of work to catch up on because she ain't do shit the last four years. Well, her platform was on cyberbullying, and her husband was the biggest cyberbully out there. <laughs> so, it got a shake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what about, you know, like... DJ PRS1, I appreciate your silence this week. I'm a little disappointed I'm, in you, brother. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try to reel it back in, you know, like, if you look at all the shows, you know, you got like, the Bill, <laughs> Bill Cosby. You got uh, family ties, you know. Again, the guy, the man, the father. The guy? Yeah. Bill family Bobby. matters. Carl Winslow. He, he was was the Bill Cosby was married to an attorney, a successful attorney, Claire Huxtable. What's your problem? He, he chose her. <laughs> he chose her. She chose he him. Told. If you listen to the story... He, he chose Huxtable her. was a scrawny little dude, and she saw him running. Mm-hmm. You remember he, this stuff? Yeah. Come on. You, I you like the the show. <laughs> he chose her. He ran, he was running and he ran after her and he caught her. And he chose her. <laughs> but but Carl, Carl Winslow and his wife. Yeah, I mean, men look, men chooses their 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 mates. You know, it is what it is. Um, it's up to him. Men to not try to choose. Men try to choose. You know, only certain men can really choose. Men try to choose. And then when they run out of choices, they end up with, like, the dregs of society. And then people are like, oh, damn, where did he pick her up? Uh, yeah. He ran out of choices. That's he what happened. He dumped He dumped it. I just... <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, not everybody, you know. Not choose, every choose guy them. has their choice. Yeah, not not every every guy. Some guys just have to settle for what they have. Be hey, good, Rich. Hey, that's a, I like that. That hey, that word. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. Oh my goodness, who was it? Who said it? Uh, who said it? He said, um, Chris Rock said it. He said, um, you know what burns men up inside secretly. Is that he know he's not his wife's first choice? Yep. <laughs> yeah, and I thought about it, and I, you know, I, I kind of looked at my wife. I was like, I better be. Her first choice. Now, if she had her first choice, isn't he divorced now? So she divorced his ass. That's because she's not funny. You know, he got tired of being in the house with someone that ain't funny. He is a trifling trick. Stop. He's <laughs> flat out said <laughs> he cheated. What are you talking about? I, he, yeah, because, I mean, he, he cheated with somebody that was funnier than she was. Oh. Oh, my bad. So, obviously, when he picked, he didn't pick right, because then he would have picked someone that was funny. He should have picked someone that was funny. So, there again, where's his symphony and his violins and the orchestra but, but, and all that stuff? He did not pick. The right person, so we he can't didn't. trust him. He to probably be. bamboozled them into. Yeah, he was bamboozled. Somebody was writing her oh, joke. Oh, now it's bamboozled. She, yeah. Oh, you know, with the, that, with the you know, because that's what women do sometimes. They bamboozle you. And I go back to my initial point, y'all. Adam and Eve, yeah. Y'all weak. Y'all trifling. And the bosom. And then. Yes, you guys are trifling. Come on, don't act confused. I've heard the stories, RL. I've heard the stories. He's like, like some squirrels and trying to get a nut. How did you know? 
<laughs> like, but, but hey, like, look, like, what woman want a man that ain't a man's man? You know what I mean? Do you really want a dude that can't pull chicks who ain't ha- who who numbers isn't high? I don't know a woman that does not want a man. An alpha I do. Man. That's right. And, and don't look good no in chick the nowhere. If if this chick tells you you don't need to be pulling, the only thing you need to be pulling is a big fat paycheck. That's what you <laughs> need to be pulling. Work your ass on that. Don't be working on the sideline for all these other hoes. That's that we're done with that game. Uh, you can't uh, help it if a man want to work a part time job. Part time job? Doing what? Whatever's needed and necessary to. Provide sanity in a household. Mm. <laughs> if you... <laughs> I just be pulling shit out the air. Y'all got me trying. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, so yeah. so, but before we get off, right? In, in all seriousness, I am the big kid in the house. I'm just just like uh, Regan is. Yeah, I'm the big kid in the house. I, I don't say no. Uh, to anything like I can't supposed to be in bed at nine thirty, no TV, no nothing, and um, I wait, I, I go in the room and I see they're up, and I'm like, well, look, turn the TV down real low. I'll keep mommy in the bedroom, right? And <laughs> I'm the big kid, man. Yep. Like she go, I feel so bad. So she go in the room. Like the other night, um, I told them, I said, hey, look. When the uh the alarm on your phone go off at ten o'clock, you know what I'm saying, stop playing the games, get in bed, and y'all can watch a movie. Right? And did it for like three nights in a row, she didn't know. So the third, fourth night, she goes in there and she's like, All right, y'all, turn off everything, blah, 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 blah. And Jojo breaks down, like, but daddy said that and she come in the room, come back in the bedroom, and I'm like, What's wrong? Cause her whole mood changed from the time she left our bedroom till she came back. And she was like, I'm always the villain. And I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah but you're my villain. You know, you're my, come here, come here, you're my villain. You're my, you're my Corilla DeVille and shit. Yeah, you know Corilla I mean? DeVille. <laughs> I, I, so my wife, my wife, you know, hey, so she runs the house. She, she does a better job than me because I'm soft. I'm soft. Uh, far as straightening up, getting on us. Like we, I don't even know what day. Like they put the recycling out today. I didn't even know we started back recycling. She was like, "Yeah, we started last week." I'm like, "I fucking didn't." Know. I, didn't I didn't even know. <laughs> I, didn't. I didn't even know we were started recycling. Yeah, I, I <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So Here we go dumpster diving again. I gotta go get the shit out the damn trash. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> in, in our household, it is truly Mrs. Lindsay who holds it down. I, I'm be honest, but I don't know what the fuck I do in here. Now that we think about it, I, you know, outside of this, we all you know, try to figure out the same thing. I mean, it, it's like I sit around. I used to wonder the same thing about, you know, my ex. I'm like, what see, look, I, I I try to make a compelling you? argument, but you know, it, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to make a compelling argument, but yeah, I I mean, I'm. The women want it. The women, women do do you know a better job. I we had to play devil's advocate for this damn show to you know get you some know why Regan was get quiet? everybody freaking right. I know his dirt. <laughs> hey, he knows. Hey. I know yep. his dirt. Yeah, yeah. He opens That's why my ass, my ass my ass off the whole like, time. Oh, hell, uh, when she started talking talk. about mom lived down the street and the, I knew the it was Islam. coming. I knew it was coming. I didn't even know mom lived down the street. I never heard that part of the story. I, I knew it was coming. It took a village. It took a village. <laughs> yep. I knew it was it coming. Took, That's what I say. It, but we had it to. It took a village. It took a village. I had, you, I had, need, I had to go down. I had to branch off into that unexpected route. Nobody expected me to say men. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised you ain't say, how about those Buccaneers? How about those All right. Buccaneers? Coming up, <laughs> right, right. That would have been a good cut right in between there. Uh, oh, we can. We we're, we're about to close it down, folks. Glad you always watching. Way. Women do run the household better. How, um, how are y'all dealing with that in Florida? The Super Bowl is in Tampa Bay. <laughs> yeah. How are y'all going to? I mean, what in the hell? What are y'all going to do? They, they having like um, 
7,500 um, first responders at the game. Are y'all going to have a packed stadium? Probably. See, these are the kinds of questions that intelligent people ask. <laughs> but when you live in this state, you realize <laughs> that anything Money talks goes. and bullshit walks. So, see these walls around me? This is my stadium. I'll be watching that <laughs> shit on that there TV. Yep. <laughs> and yep, so yep. I'll hear about all those people and their COVID and everything else that comes down. The, maybe they're giving them the vaccine as they're walking in. And like, as they're walking in. Yeah. There you go. Because maybe that's that what they're saving smart. the vaccines for. Right. That would be smart. Well, before be, we shut it down, I wanted to I want to jump on the, the our Facebook feed and just want to say hi to Ms. Betran, as usual, for checking in with us. I couldn't read all the comments. Um, uh, Markel Nelson for watching. Holly Guiding, hey, Mom. Miss <laughs> um, Tolliver, as usual. I'm not going to hit edit. Miss Tolliver's going to hook me up tonight with a whole bunch of... The, she loves... She's going to get your autograph, Alicia. She wants your autograph. Um, who else is on here? Suzanne. Suzanne Ramdan Singh is on here. We got... Um, <laughs> we got Miss Marion. Marion Hossein is also watching. Nice to see y'all on here. Want to say thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting see, Good Vibes TV. And um, all these people would definitely support the fact that I said women run the house. They do. Women I'm run sure, the house. We I'm, would just play them as sure, Hey, look. I'm sure all of y'all are single, too. <laughs> you know what? what? We're, we Hold on. We <laughs> might be single, but we run some damn shit. I'll tell you that. I, hey, hey. I, to, I, I know it. We I run circles. It. <laughs> in pearls and yeah. chucks single and all and you know what that's saying when you've got powerful women like that hmm what is your role that's the question mark these men need to be asking themselves what is my role because uh -oh. if women see back in the day now you guys stood a chance because these women they came out of from their mom and their daddy's house they were, I gotta find me a husband Take care of me. I can be the conductor <laughs> in the house. And you can be the symphony. Now it's like, what are you doing? What What's happening? I think now the first date, they're like, uh, what exactly is your credit score? <laughs> what is happening? Uh, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> anything, hey, look, anything over 500, 550 to 575. Yeah. <laughs> Baby mama, better than, you have. That's better than 50%. You, you got somebody with them 600 standards, man. Like next. Yeah, yeah ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but, you know, just pay so, for it. Yes. Yeah. And I damn sure know who runs a DJ PRS1 household. Yeah. She upstairs. I've met her before. <laughs> yeah, she upstairs. Mm hmm. <laughs> Her and her three kids. <laughs> there you go, her and the three kids. There you go. He is so, <laughs> no, just no, you just gotta know our roles. That's all. I mean, I, yeah. I, as the rock said, know your role and shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, it is. We, we know our role. Talk, talk. Our roles is we are the, the uh, superior dildos, and as long as I'm, we one of them, maintain I'm balance. That's right. That's right. <laughs> We keep it steady, baby. Keep it afloat. So, uh, yeah. PRS One, you got anything upcoming? You still doing the radio thing? Uh, yeah, see, I got IRS Spice. looking for you. Trini Spice FM is still rocking. So, yeah, go on to the website www.trinispicefm1.com. one dot com. Check out our gear store if you want to get show some support. I just put some new stuff on there. We got mugs. We got uh what else do i have bikinis i have uh just check it out it's got a cool a whole bunch of cool stuff on the gear store um you know nothing fancy um but yeah i got a whole bunch of new soca coming out just i just got the new cast cast has just just released his it's on the station already you guys can listen to it um and if you want to tune in you could always tune in to trinity spice fm um we're on you know your android and uh apple devices free Download the apps for free. And you can even listen to me on your Alexa devices. Just enable Trinity Spice FM in your Alexa screen, uh, store. 
You're on the TuneIn app or any one of those streaming apps, just search Trinity Spice FM, and we're on there. All right? And for all of you Reagan fans, you know, it's yes, it's me. It's me. This is our station. This is my station, my wife's station. We do this out of, you know, the love of the music, the love of the soca. Um, yep, Rome, Ramon, it's all on you. How's your book coming? Uh, man, fuck that book, man. <laughs> Until until COVID is, it, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm small time. I'm in the beginning. You should write, you know, write a gonna, supplement, a COVID supplement. I'm I'm actually writing something, uh, uh, you know, based on uh, the last seven to eight months dealing right. with COVID. So I'm I'm actually doing something like that. And that People home, they, they want something to read. <laughs> that actually might take priority over the first book, which is crazy. But I, I'm, I'm actually writing something about uh, the last seven to eight months, especially my experience having COVID for those two weeks right. and how I, how I infected others and didn't know I had it. So I'm actually, you know, I, I am writing that. Um, but other than that, you know, um, I'm in the house laying low, you know what I'm saying? Um, I hate to say it cause I feel kind of bad when, when Barack Obama was in the office for eight years, I prayed every day for him and his family. And for four, the last four years, I did not pray. I prayed like one time and it was like, oh God, please protect us, the people from this asshole. You know what I mean? <laughs> so um, I'm back to praying for our president and VP. And uh, it's just like a, what Alicia said. It, it just feels so good to wake up and not have that be a concern. Like, what is this jackass going to say today? So right. I'm kind of just really basking in this whole uh, the last week, really enjoying it. I'm not doing anything, but like I said, I am. Uh, I have been writing uh, about the COVID in the last few months and all that good stuff. But other than that, nah, I'm I'm falling back and chilling, man. You know, some brother ain't on child support no more. I got my money, bitches. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I might not know my role in this household, but I know my money's tight. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, yep. what's up with you, same, Alicia? Same with me. I know Pam money tight. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I just, I mean, for me, honestly, I, I like you, RL. I am laying low with COVID nineteen. Um, I'm teaching from home, and my daughter. I, I'm thankful that she's able to. To pretty much be at school um, remotely as well with me. I am so proud of my brother, and I've told him this many times. And you know, he 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 did something that was amazing. And I remembered him and I having a little bit of a, a, a text conversation last year. And I I don't mean to 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 be sentimental, but I think what people need to realize. You know, and and he was telling me how proud he was of me going back to school as a single mom, getting my doctorate, doctorate, and and him being there at my graduation. But I'm like, dude, you did something that I can't do. I I can't pick up a book or write a dissertation on what you've done. You took something that was your hobby, your passion, and made something. You can badass out of it. Don't forget I used to get my ass whooped for it. And and you know, there are times that he gets like really stressed because he's a man and he can't <laughs> take pressure. Weak. <laughs> like most men. And it, you know, and, and you know, the, 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 the fig leaves start falling and it's like, oh I can't I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Dude. What you've created, it's amazing. I mean, to come out with an internet station sitting there on your own because this guy would get his ass whooped from my dad for music, for cassettes, those little cassette players. <laughs> yep. Instead of studying and doing homework, he was sneaking and listening to music and cassette players. He was. This was always his passion, always. It was always a, always about music. His story on its own should be journaled because he was such a goofy kid. They looked at me like this is our only hope because <laughs> she she could Dang. actually spell. And this kid is just like, you know, and his favorite line was, oh, no, 
Why'd you do it? Oh, no. <laughs> I, didn't, I honestly didn't know. You know, he would just be in trouble all the time. And <laughs> mom's on here going so true. <laughs> and I would, I am marveled and I have to say, I'm so proud. And again, what keeps him and keeps that backbone going? He has a great wife. He has a great wife. He has a good team. I mean, as a sister, I love and support him from afar and he knows it, but you have that strong woman that he chose right. You. He because chose if, he, right. if he was married to a woman who acted like my dad, he began his ass whoop now. <laughs> he get his ass whoop <laughs> now. Even he's still getting his ass whooped. Pam over there handling over to him. So, this time, this time know, I like it. Spank it. But I, I wanted to say that and then um so you know, like promoting it and stuff like that. I'm I'm just my heart is filled with so much pride for him. And I know he does it for the love of the music and, and I pray that one day he would have, you know, monetary fruition out of it because I think it's well deserved. And I think when that Absolutely. time comes it's gonna be great. But for Absolutely. me, I've worked my ass off for the past ten years. It's been a tough road studying. Um, going through a divorce, uh, being becoming a single mom, doing things on my own. And I have to say I'm very blessed. I have my health, not first and foremost, and I have my family. And I'm, you know, I have a great career and stuff like that. And what is now making me happy are the simple pleasures of being able to sit and catch up on all of these Netflix series that all my friends were talking about for the past 10 years, like, oh, did you watch that? Did you watch this? I was like, I can't even turn on the TV because it's like, I have papers to write. Well, now, <laughs> <laughs> my weekends are called binge watching. There you go. I, am, I just started, I just finished The Crown. I am on Greenleaf with Oprah. I'm just, oh, anything I can watch. <laughs> I'm just watching it and it, and I don't want anything that's going to cause me to think. I just want just brainless stuff. Anything with some drama. Binge watching it. Netflix and Soka. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so that's it. That's her thing. All right, RL, you can lock it off for now. I uh, love and appreciate everyone who tuned in once again, who supported us. Thank uh, you. Oh, what's the, what are, are we in season two, right? Season two still? Season two, yeah. Episode 32. Season two. It, wow, that's incredible. Right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, thank you, PRS One. Thank you, Alicia, for being back on the show again. But this week, don't think I didn't realize you pulled your hair back and let us see them beautiful ears. Um, <laughs> oh, these flappers? Y- okay. Yes. No, my my. This is my hair in a mess. This is me running around my hair in a mess. So, you got and the dream catcher with- earrings on. Yeah, mm-hmm. ain't nothing wrong with it. We've seen it. All of us seen it. All of us been talking. I got people hit me up, like, ask her about her ears. They asked me 30 uh, minutes ago. I said, dog, I'm not going to ask her about her ears. My ears? Right. They, they love them. They love them. My homeboy, uh, his <laughs> name is Tony. He, he loved those ears. So I had to throw that in there before. Well, my brother, sitting right next to me, made fun of my ears my whole entire life that I have such a complex now that I wear my hair down to cover my ears. He used to call me bat ears. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you got a whole lot of people who was hitting me up asking me to talk about your ears because they Well, I might start that website and just feature my ear. There you go. Only fans. Only fans for ears. You got people out there with it. (laughs) Hey, hey, check in with us next week. GVTV, I'm RL, PRS1, Miss Alicia, and uh, we'll get back to Only Fans Feet and Ears. (laughs) (laughs) Later. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's sign out bye. thank y'all for watching bye <laughs>